Hi everyone. To get an accurate representation of the toolpaths you create in Fusion, you can simulate them driving a model of your machine. The purpose of this video is to provide an overview of how you can use machine definitions and the machine builder functionality to create your own custom machines. In the description below, you can find links and references to more in-depth information. Before building your own custom machine, it's important to know that an extensive collection of machines already is available in the Fusion Machine Library. In Fusion, you can view the library by selecting the Machine Library icon, then on the left, click on Fusion Library. Machine tools come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and configurations. There are three main types or configurations of 5-axis machines. A head table machine consists of the three main orthogonal axes with two additional rotary components, one on a spindle and one on a table. A head head machine consists of three main orthogonal axes. In this case, both rotational components are located on the spindle. The third type is known as a table table machine, in which both rotational components are located on the table. And here's a look at the machine used for this video. This machine is a table table machine because both of the rotary axes are located on the table. The CAD model for this machine tool came from the manufacturer's website. After importing it into Fusion, it was organized and simplified. This was done by removing hidden components and details such as some doors and windows and chip evacuators. Doing this helps make the simulation move more quickly Parts for each axis have been grouped together, the non-moving parts grouped into either the base or enclosure. It's best to name these components so the name clearly indicates the machine axis parts they represent. Then with our model organized, we can begin working on the machine definition. To do that, we make sure we're in the manufacturing workspace, we select the milling tab, and we go down to the machine library icon. Alternately, we can go to Utilities and access the Machine Library icon here. Note that this button no longer gives access to the Machine Builder. Clicking it explains that access to the Machine Builder is now from the Machine Definition dialog that is accessed from the Machine Library dialog. The button will be removed in a future release. After opening the Machine Library dialog, you select the local folder here and then click on the large plus sign to create a new machine. And of course, in this case, we specify that it's a milling machine. That opens the machine definition dialog. Because this machine represents a Haas VF2 TR160, I'll name it accordingly and give it a suitable description. You can even add a picture of the machine tool. The capabilities item provides controls applicable to the machine. For this video, I won't make any changes here. Kinematics are one of the most important parts of these machine definitions. Kinematics define how the machine axis traverse and rotate within the individual axis limits. This machine definition has only X, Y, and Z. We'll need to add two more rotary axes, A and C. The VF series machine has the Z axis located on the spindle, also called the head. So I'll drag the Z over to the head. And on this machine, the y-axis precedes the x, so I'll click on the x and pull it in after the y. We need to add the two missing rotary axes, a and c. And to do that, we pick on table, and we use the plus sign, and we say rotary axis. That brought in the a-axis. Then we do that again, rotary axis, and that created the c-axis in our kinematic chain. If you need to change the axis designator, it's up here. Look further down the dialog to see settings for the orientation and limits. We need to make sure that the axis of rotation for the A and C are set correctly. The A axis rotates around the X. Click on the C and show that it rotates around the Z. Then we'll go back and check the A axis. Notice the small arrow in the icons for the rotary axes. They show the axis of direction. It's also important that each axis have the range specified correctly. 
So if we look at the A axis, that axis on this machine can travel plus or minus 120 degrees. But as you see, I can choose to limit it to plus and minus 90 degrees. And the C axis is not limited like this, it is unlimited. Once we have the axis set up as I shown here, we have it correct for this machine. Now that our kinematic chain is completed, we move on to the post-processing item. Machine definitions require a post-processor because toolpath information is passed through the post before being displayed. The post-processor selected must be one that has machine simulation capabilities. We can use the filters over here to tell it that we want to see only posts that have machine simulation capabilities, and you can choose a vendor as well. In this case, it will be Haas. If your post processor is not simulation ready, it will need to be adjusted. In the description below, you can find links to help with that. And this button can be used to find a link to the Autodesk Service Marketplace. There you can find channel partners to support your post processor needs. Now we move on to the model selection in our machine definition. In here we need to choose a model and because we already have the model for the machine open, this is going to be our choice. Next, we click on the button called Machine Builder. This will take us to where we can configure the machine to match the kinematics that we've already defined. The Machine Builder screen looks like this. These are the buttons we'll use. The first step here is to make sure that the z-axis in this model is correctly aligned with the z-axis in the Fusion Coordinate System. We can confirm that by visiting the View Cube and selecting Front. That shows us that the z-axis is pointing down. If the machine is not orientated correctly, you can use the Move Components tool to adjust the machine tool's position as needed. Often it's simply a matter of rotation. Next step is to define or link the components of the machine model that should move with each of the various axes. The way we do that is we use this button up here called Setup Machine Model. First thing to supply is the attach point for the tool. I'll rotate the machine over to here so we can see the spindle face. Then by selecting the circle, its center point is used. Take care to select the circle that is at the correct Z height. Then we want to supply the attach point for the part and that will be the center top of the table. So we'll use this button and supply that point by selecting the circle. Now we want to supply the Z axis. We don't have to select a graphic, just one of the components in the browser. We come over here and because we so nicely named our components, we can simply select the right component. And we need to do the same for the Y axis and the same for the X axis. Then the same for the A axis. Notice that rotary axis have an additional point needed. We need to supply the rotation point. I'll turn this component off so I can easily see that circle center. All right, then we need to do the same with the C axis. We select this as the C axis and then use another circle to define its center point of rotation. Then close the dialog by clicking OK. And now we move on to the next tool, Preview Machine Movements. This allows us to use sliders to jog the axis and confirm that we've connected the various parts correctly. Here's the y-axis moving, that looks right, and the x-axis. The a-axis seems correct, and the c-axis looks right. Okay, when you're satisfied that things are as they should be, close the preview machine movements dialog. Then use this green check mark to close the machine builder. 
That brings us back to the machine library page where we can click OK to close it and then save the file. To see how we'll use this machine file for simulations in Fusion, check out the next video in the series. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please click the like button. It encourages us to make similar videos and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.